Hey everybody and welcome to another video from the Electronic Armory. In this video we're covering geofencing which continues our series on iOS development and we're going to use the base application we developed in the last video on locations to get notified when the user enters or exits a region. This region can be an area outside your house, work, school, or whatever and when you enter that region or exit that region iOS is going to notify us. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe and keep up with all the future videos on iOS, Android, and 3D game development. So let's get started. Geofencing can be imagined as an invisible fence that you set up. This can be a circle with a radius, a square, or any kind of polygon that you want to define. iOS will let our application know when you enter that area that is fenced off, as well as leave it. We'll be using our previous project where we acquired the user's device location, so make sure you grab the source code for that from the link below, or copy it down as you see it on the screen, because as you can see, it's not a whole lot of code. Don't forget the plist entry for the permission. Now I'm going to show you how easy it is to enable geofencing. So the first thing that we need to do is create a region or a fence, if you will, so that we can get notified when we enter or exit that fence. So I'm going to create a, a constant here, and I'm just going to call this geofence region. And this is going to be of type CL for core location, circular region. And if I type in region, you can see some of the other regions that we have in our list here. But I'm going to go back and type in circular region. And then I'm going to instantiate this using the CL circular region constructor here. And it's going to ask for a couple of parameters. This is the one that we're interested in. It's going to take a coordinate 2D item, a radius. So you can set a point and then a radius and that will create your circle for you. And then if you want to, you can put a identifier in there to let geofencing know which region this is. So this could be your home, this could be your office, this could be your, uh, your school or whatever you wanna get notified when a, when a user comes in here. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do is start with that, that coordinate 2D item. And so we have this little convenience method, CL location coordinate 2D, which I don't see right here. So location coordinate 2D, and then the make function here. And this will allow us to type in a latitude and longitude. So I'm just going to paste in a latitude and longitude here that I already have set up. And I'm going to hit control forward slash to go to the next placeholder and then paste in that longitude and latitude. All right, so now we have that. This is this can be any point. This could be user defined. You can get the device's current location if you want, which we uh, already have starting up here. Obviously, you put this line of code in our update here so that we actually have the user's location. And then the radius for this, um, it it doesn't really matter. I'm going to put in about 10 here just to give a, a nice radius and then control forward slash to go to that second, third placeholder. And I'm going to give this identifier of let's just call it Boise, which is the city where that point is centralized on. Okay, so now that we have the variable set up, which basically just defines our GPS location with the radius on here, I next need to start monitoring for that region. So make a little bit of space here and tell our location manager, start monitoring for region and it'll accept any type CL region and so that can be a circular region uh, that could be a, a polygon if you if you want to put that in there uh, you can look up CL region look up the documentation for that for for additional shapes for for that that it'll accept I'm just going to paste that one in there for geofence region that we created and the next thing that we need to do is when the user enters that location or exits that we have to get notified and the way that we get that done is we have two callbacks for our location manager. So I'm going to go down here, I'm going to create some space, and I'm going to type in FUNC location manager, and that'll give us some of the uh, functions here that we can choose from. So if you see right here, did exit region and did enter region, we're going to do did enter region first. And we're simply just going to take this region parameter and just print it out to the screen. Oops, wrong key, control forward slash, and we're gonna print this out. And you could do dot notation to get some, uh, some additional information about that region, such as the, um, the identifier, like that. And um, I'll just go ahead and maybe print that out, see if that works fine for us for this case. And FUNC, oops, I didn't wanna create that. So again, location manager, and then did exit region. And that'll give us our 
function that gets called when we exit that particular region. And again, I'm just gonna print out the region and the identifier. All right, great. So now that we have the functions for did enter region and did exit region, there's a couple things I wanted to touch upon before we try to run this. And there's one more thing we have to fix before iOS will allow us to start monitoring for these regions. Now, the one thing I wanted to mention is that radius is in meters. So this is actually a very tight um, radius for this circle. So I'm gonna switch this over to 100 meters just so we have a little bit more of a, of a buffer for this to get into. Uh, the way that I know that this is in meters, if you hold down the option key, a little question mark will come up over it. If you click on that word now, you can see all the parameters and what they do. And so radius is the distance measured in meters from the center point. And you can read what the other uh, parameters are. You can read the definition. So it's a very handy tool. Again, that's option and click, and that works for almost everything that we have here. So that's the one thing I just wanted to mention. The next thing we need to do is actually change request when in use authorization to always be monitoring the user's location because what we need to do is monitor the location whether the application is being used or not. And so uh, if you remember from the previous video, we have a, another request called request always authorization. And so if we select that, and I'm gonna get rid of those extra parentheses there. When we select that, we're going to have to add another key to our info plist file. But again, if we just go ahead and run this right now, request always authorization, you're going to get a, an error in your console that says that the uh, info plist must contain NS location always and when in use usage description and when in use usage description. So we already added the second key here. So I'm going to copy this first key Go over to my info plist. You can see the, the key that I added here. Let me expand this just a little bit so you can see it. That's the original one that we had for when in use. So I'm just gonna paste in that new key there and select over here. And this is going to be always being monitored. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And now we should be able to get our application working. One thing I wanna do actually is I'm going to hit uh, Apple Shift H to hide that and I'm gonna hold, click and hold and then delete this application just because I want that permission to come up initially. So Apple Shift H or Command Shift H, sorry. Hit the play button to run this again and we're going to run the application. You'll see everything coming in from scratch. All right, so the difference I wanted to show you was we have the ability to turn off and say only when in use or always allow. So we need to select always allow to get that geofencing monitoring, hit that. All right, so we get our, our location updates as we expected. If we go over to our view controller, I'm gonna scroll down here. And if you remember where we placed that point, it was at 43, negative 116. Uh, I'm gonna actually put some breakpoints here just to make sure that we're hitting those breakpoints. I'm gonna shift, uh, go over to our simulator and go to debug. And then we're going to um, change our custom location from something outside of the region so if I switch this from a five to a four, you can see that it matches that coordinate up in the right-hand corner here. And we're gonna hit okay. And that's going to hit our breakpoint and print out our region identifier. If I step over that by hitting this button here, it'll just say Boise. Let me go ahead and uh, uh, hit the trash can here to clear that out. I'm gonna remove that breakpoint because I know it's working now. And we're going to set our location back in outside of that region. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit five again, and you'll see the output for that. I didn't play it, so let me play it. All right, and so we exited the reason. You can see that we exited Boise. So let me go ahead and clean this up a little bit for the example code that you can download. The link will be in the description below, but if we put this in parentheses, I'm going to say exited region and same thing for up here i'm going to say entered so it's going to say entered boise exited boise and we're just going to use our formatting here and that should be it so let me go ahead and run this no breakpoints so you should just see the the printout in the console as it goes all right so we should be in the region 
let's get or out of the region, I guess. And we're going to go back into it by hitting that GPS location at the center. And this could be off by a little bit. If you remember, as long as we're in that 100 meter range with this GPS location, then we'll be fine. So there it is, entered Boise, sandwiched between two location updates. And then getting out of it, we can go this way if we want to, and exited. All right, so that's all I got for you guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. In the next video, we're going to pop up local notifications that will allow us to drop down a notification on the person's device, kind of like a push notification, but it originates from the device itself. And we're gonna alert the user that, hey, you've entered this region or you've exited this region. So make sure you subscribe to this channel to see that video and other videos on Android development, 3D game development, and so much more. Thanks. We'll see you next time.